Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Mike Todorovic and in this video we're going to take a look at nucleotides and DNA very quickly. So in the previous videos I've spoken about the four macro molecules, these being proteins, fats, carbohydrates, and now that fourth one which we haven't spoken about yet but we will today, being nucleotides. Now nucleotides are comprised of carbons, oxygens, hydrogens and nitrogens. Okay, now we spoke about proteins, fats and carbs. They also contain carbon, oxygen, hydrogen and nitrogens, except carbs, they don't contain nitrogens. But what we're gonna talk about now is that when we look at nucleotides, they're comprised of what we call nitrogenous rings. So they're ring-shaped structures mainly made up of nitrogen. And they can either be a single ring, as you can see for this one here, or this one here, or they can be two rings linked together, as you can see with this one here and this one here. So that means that that is a nucleotide, 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 nucleotide. So if we break them up into those of the double rings, they're called purines. So those nucleotides are termed purines. Those of the single rings, they're called pyramidines. Now the other thing is this, why do we have nucleotides? We've spoken about with carbs, they're for energy, proteins there for multiple functions and structure, and fats also for energy, storage, and also for protection as well. But what about nucleotides? Nucleotides are there because they make up our DNA. Now our DNA is our genetic material, sits within the nucleus of our cells, and it basically is like the blueprint for our life. It turns into genes, genes turn into proteins, proteins have a function, and our body is made up of proteins, function. So, let's have a look and see how nucleotides make up proteins. So, here's a nucleotide here. This nucleotide, you can see I put a G in one of those nitrogen-based rings, that's called guanine. So this nucleotide's guanine. This one with an A is adenine. This one with a C is cytosine. This one with a T is thymine. So there are these four nucleotides. In actual fact, there's five. The fifth one is called uracil, which is very similar to a thymine. We'll talk about that in a future video. So these nucleotides, a G, an A, a C, and a T, in order to make DNA, they need to be bound to a couple of other things. First thing they need to be bound to is a sugar molecule. So you can see each of them are bound to a sugar molecule that I've denoted here with an S. This sugar molecule is very similar to that of glucose. Now the sugar molecule is always attached to this phosphate molecule. So you can see phosphate, 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 phosphate. Phosphate is a PO4 negative, and you can see that there. PO, actually three, negative. So when we have a look at this, we can see that all DNA molecules will have a nucleotide, one of the four or five, a sugar and phosphate backbone. So here we go, here's the backbone, which is sugar and phosphate, comes together and you can see what will happen because the individual nucleotides make hydrogen bonds with one another. We now have one strand of DNA, another strand of DNA, bound together, having a conversation, and they wrap around into this double helix structure. So it is a linear, that means straight molecule. There's two strands bound together in a helical fashion, and it looks like the rungs of a ladder. Now those rungs are the conversations that are being had between the nucleotides, and always, a G will always speak to a C. That's a guanine always speaking to a cytosine. They will always, if a C is on this side, it will talk to a G on that side and vice versa. An A, which is an adenine, will always talk to a T on the other side, which is thymine and vice versa. The Gs binding to the Cs will always be three hydrogen bonds, always. An A talking to a T will always be two hydrogen bonds. Now this may not be of too much clinical relevance clinically, but it is when we do scientific research because it means it's harder to break the bonds between a G and a C, and it's easier to break the bonds between an A and a T. Sometimes what we wanna do when we do research is we want to make multiple copies of DNA, in, and in order to do so, we need to unravel this DNA, so unwrap it and open it up, and we can do this using temperature. Increase the temperature, it opens it up. But when you've got more G's and C's, there's more bonds, the temperature needs to be greater in order to open this DNA up. Okay, now another important point is when we have a look at the DNA, you can see that ultimately what it comes down to is our DNA is made up of those four nucleotides, A, G, T, and C, in what seems to be a random order. We actually have in every single one of our cells, except red blood cells, 
DNA. And there's about three billion of these nucleotides per cell. So each DNA strand that we have, three billion nucleotides. These nucleotides will ultimately be read into amino acids and the amino acids will fold into proteins. Now before that happens, we need to read the DNA and turn it into something called RNA, which will be a future video. So this is the basis of nucleotides and DNA.